programming brought to you by AWI Networks, Smarter Internet. Thanks for joining St. George News at 8. I'm Scott Beadle. A couple was rescued earlier this month when their rental car broke down and they became stranded for six days in Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument. 78-year-old Helena Byler and 76-year-old Jared Byler had little food or water. They were reported overdue on September 27th. Delafave of Panguitch was checking on cattle on October 2nd when he found Helena Byler lying on a road. She was severely dehydrated and very confused. Lefebvre called authorities and met up with a Kane County deputy to take her to the hospital. When she was coherent, she explained the situation, and another deputy was sent to find Gerald Byler. A helicopter crew also went to search and spotted an SOS made of rocks. They eventually found him alive in a trailer, and he was rushed to a hospital. A 61-year-old man faces numerous charges for the alleged sexual abuse of a 7-year-old boy. Fidel Duran of St. George was arrested Tuesday after that boy told authorities Fidel had done something to him. The boy was interviewed at the Children's Justice Center where he told details of the alleged abuse. Court documents also say a nine-year-old boy and a woman witnessed some of the abuse. Duran faces multiple charges including first-degree felony rape of a child and sexual abuse of a child. The Washington County Drug Task Force made several arrests last week while searching a Washington County residence executed that search warrant on the 400 block of Rocco Road. Officers arrested 41-year-old Jesse DeLance Randall, 40-year-old Allison Reed Thornton, and 38-year-old Lynn Marie Young. Investigators say they discovered meth, marijuana, Adderall, and metadata. They said they also discovered two digital scales and some small baggies that suggest distribution. During booking, officials say they located a baggie on Thornton with meth that they say she had tried to smuggle into the jail. All three now face multiple drug charges. A routine traffic stop on I-15 led to a 37-year-old man being arrested for drug trafficking charges. Washington County K-9 helped find two pounds of marijuana there. A trooper had spotted a vehicle making lane changes without proper signals and pulled the driver over near Leeds. A trooper became suspicious while talking to the driver, Oscar Domingo Batista of Los Angeles. Authorities say a probable cause searched up two pounds of marijuana and seven and a half ounces of marijuana wax. Batista was arrested and faces several drug charges. A number of area municipalities have canceled elections due to a lack of candidates. Those include Hurricane, Ivins, and Rockville. All of their candidates are either unopposed or will win by acclamation. Hurricane City's mayor and two council members will keep their seats by acclamation. Ivins will also see its mayor and two council members pass through without a challenge. Similar situation in Rockville, as the mayor and two more council members are unopposed. For those whose cities are have election, do have elections going on, Election Day is coming up on November 7th. Authorities have given an update on the investigation into the mass shooting in Las Vegas nearly two weeks ago. The Sheriff's Office and an FBI held a news conference today, hoping to clear up some earlier information that raised questions about officers' response time. Marcy Gonzalez has the latest. Investigators clarifying the timeline from the night of the Las Vegas massacre. The sheriff now saying despite earlier statements, six minutes did not pass between when the gunman shot a hotel security guard and when he opened fire into the crowd of concert goers below, explaining instead it was only a matter of seconds. Mr. Campos received his wounds in close proximity to 2205. He attempted to relay that information via uh, his radio. Investigators say officers arrived on the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay Hotel 12 minutes after the shooting began. By then, the attack was over. The sheriff defensive over accusations of incompetency and conspiracy. Nobody is attempting to hide anything. And we're now getting our first look at that injured security guard since the shooting. Jesus Campos, pictured here this week, being honored with an award. One of the 546 people injured in the attack, 58 others were killed. Funerals held for some of those victims today, including Hannah Allers and Lisa Patterson. Both were mothers of three. 
Thursday, musician Jason Aldean, who was on stage when the rampage began, held his first concert since that horrific night. And it's been uh, it's been a really tough thing to deal with for all of us up here. And I think the one thing that's probably going to help us more than anything is play for you guys tonight. The sheriff says 45 people injured in that attack are still hospitalized and investigators say they are still no closer to figuring out the gunman's motive. Meteorologist Kim Walker has your Southern Utah forecast coming up right after this. The weather tonight is brought to you by AWI Networks, smarter internet. Welcome back everyone after a very nice day. Temperatures this weekend will be a little bit cooler as a cold front moves into our area, but it's going to be sunny through the weekend. Then temperatures rebound early next week, but then as we head toward the end of the week, we are going to see another system come through and we do have chances of rain. We haven't seen a lot of rain in our area at least for a month or so. High temperatures today, it was 79 degrees in St. George, a little bit cooler in Enterprise at 70 degrees. Cedar City was 70 as well, uh, or just around the 70s, and then 84 degrees in Mesquite and warm in Vegas at 85 degrees. We are going to see those temperatures drop a little bit as we make our way into tomorrow. Tonight, though, it's going to be pretty chilly, especially for Cedar City, where it's just going to be a degree above freezing. 46 for the overnight low in St. George, 51 in Mesquite, and 47 degrees in Hurricane. We are expecting temperatures to remain cool as we make our way into tomorrow, and they will continue to drop throughout the weekend, and that's because high pressure will start to build in. We're on the east side of this high, so that means that winds will be coming uh, from the north and it's going to be a dry wind as well and so that's why we're going to continue with the sunshine we're not going to have a lot of clouds in our sky but it's going to be cool because of the air is coming from uh, canada and so it's going to be a little bit cooler uh, especially in cedar city where temperatures will be around 40 degrees at seven o'clock at noon mostly sunny 43 degrees we climb up to around 56 so it's going to be uh, a little bit chilly at times 54 degrees at five o'clock but plenty of sunshine during the day we're going to see plenty of sunshine in St. George, but temperatures will be a little bit better. 51 degrees, mostly clear conditions at 7 o'clock, 55 at noon, and then 74 degrees will be our afternoon high before we drop back down to around 70 degrees, mostly sunny conditions at 5 o'clock. Our forecast for the across the region, temperatures will be around 78 degrees in Newcastle, uh, 56 degrees in Enterprise and Pintura, about 78 degrees. And uh, further south, we're going to be a little bit warmer. We're looking at highs around 76 in Littlefield and 77 in Mesquite. But notice those temperatures are about 5 to, to 10 degrees cooler than this time or cooler than today. Tomorrow, it's going to be pretty chilly in uh, Cedar City. But temperatures will start to rebound 68 degrees on Sunday with lots of sunshine and then back into the 70s on Monday. We're going to stay in the 70s through much of the week, but I think those clouds will start to increase. And then we have another storm system coming our way toward the end of the week. And so temperatures will drop down to around 61 degrees on Friday with a chance of a few showers. Here's a look at your forecast for uh, St. George. Temperatures tomorrow will be mild and then 80 degrees on Sunday. We're going to stay in the 80s for early next week and toward the middle part of the week, we're going to see a little bit more cloud cover. They will start to increase on your Wednesday and Thursday with another system coming through. And then by Friday, with that cold front coming, we could see a few showers across the area and temperatures will be around 71 degrees in the afternoon. So it's going to be warm and then cooling right back down into the 70s by the end of the week. But it's going to be pretty pleasant this weekend. Lots of sunshine temperatures in the 70s near 80 degrees across the area. So not yeah, a lot looks like to complain about. Great weather to get out and do a little Enjoy, hiking or yeah. exploring, whatever. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Kim. All right. Still had an offer to get a road project done a little faster. Dodging cones for months or even years due to construction can be frustrating for both drivers and businesses. Now one Illinois business has resorted to beer bribery to help alleviate some construction headaches. Yeah, this is what it looks like if you pass the Olympic Tavern on North Main Street in Rockford. The sign there reads, free beer for IDOT crew if road work is done by Monday. 
That sign was put up last week, and as you know, Monday has now come and gone. But Olympic Tavern owner Zach Rotello is still holding out hope that it's going to be wrapped up soon. Well, thanks for watching. Have a good night.